Good day and welcome. Today we are going to the second stage in the design process, which is the schematic design. We'll finish the first stage, which is the pre-design stage, and then we're in the schematic design. In the schematic design stage, you take your design, analyze it, and then begin to bring out sketches and design solutions and options. So let's begin. I'm going to approach the schematics on that three parts. One, we're going to define our limits. We're going to develop a design concept and then we're going to sketch using design thinking. So the first part is to define your limits. This is like a roundup of the pre-design stage. So you want to know the area of building you are designing and the site. You want to know the height. You want to know the access point. You want to know the viewpoints of the building. So let's take for our example the, des the design we are using for this uh, tutorials. So we have this is the site we have been given, it's sort of this way, and then we have two access roads around the site, one major and one minor. And so this is how our site looks. So the first thing we want to do is to get out our buildable area, which we've done already in the design stage. It's um, about 8 meters by 16 meters, um, after observing the appropriate setbacks. And then the next thing you want to do is to um, imagine the access into the site. So due to the uh, interaction of the site with the major route, we are going to access the site from the minor route due to, to reduce traffic and also the fact that the shape of the site doesn't align properly with the major route. So we are assessing the site from the minor route here on this section. And another thing I want to talk about is the height of the building. So we've gotten possibly our our tentative shape and how many floors are we going to go with the height. So this gives you a rough idea of how the form of the building is going to be like. So we're having two suspended floors and then this is a rough idea of this of the height of the building. Another thing I want to talk about is the access, uh, the views surrounding the building, which parts of the building are going to get uh, very uh, wonderful views. And so we know that this road here and the side facing the road will be the side to focus on to have uh, wonderful views um, into the site. And so we also know, okay, when we are designing elevation, we are going to focus uh, our attention on this section and on this section of the building. So you just imagine somebody standing here viewing your building, viewing your building. There are other plots here and here, so possibly there won't be so good views around there. So this is the first point of analysis. At least you know your limits when designing. If you're building, if you are designing various buildings, you can sketch, you know, what, uh, the kind of, uh, shapes that might be in the spaces and the links that will connect them. The next thing you want to do is to understand your context. And this is very important. Um, still under your limits. So you want to know the cultural limitations uh, that will affect your design sort of like the uh, maintenance uh, culture of the people the amount of technology they are assess uh, accessible to the materials available to you the uh, economy of the area you are designing and the economy of your client all these things can um, can limit you in one way or the other so you should be aware of it if you are designing for people with very low maintenance culture you don't want to put in a building that has high maintenance. If you are designing for people with um, very that are lacking in technological advancement, you don't want to put in too much technology. So this is something to consider. The next thing you want to consider also is your uh, climate. So um, when talking about climate, you've already done your analysis, and then you should just know what and what. Uh, um, you should just know what you should be looking out for. So. In my own case, we have rainfall, uh, and then we have um, the issue of um, ventilation. So I must cater for this. So I must provide roof drains. I must also ensure that my spaces are, are ventilated. And once you've done this, you begin to see, okay, these are the parameters that will guide the context of where I'm going to be siting my building. It's after you've done this that you can now go ahead to begin your design. Now, before you do that, um, you should also have done some case studies, or if you haven't done some case studies, you should look at inspirational images that can help you, uh, give you inspirations. Building images that are similar to the, uh, the form and kind of building that you are designing. 
this will help prepare your mind for your sketch and put you in the mood to go into the next stage and the next stage we are going to go into is the design concept stage so this is the end of the part one i'll see you guys in part two of the schematic design process thanks for watching have a nice day ciao